Hello everyone, uh, this is Mr. Saina, your renewable energy trainer. Uh, thank you so much for the feedback that I received from the previous video on cost analysis of PV uh, system designs. Today we are going to do a step-by-step -step, uh, PV system design. Thank you, uh, Brian, for uh, recommending that I do this video. The first uh, step in solar PV sizing is uh, conducting the load analysis. Um, for you to conduct a load analysis, you uh, need, uh, there are two methods. The first method you can uh, you use if uh, you have an existing uh, grid connection and you are able to get your monthly electricity bill. Uh, from that, you can work on the uh, energy consumption in uh, kilowatt hours, convert it to watt hours, and then divide it by uh, 30 days. And you should be able to get an approximate value of your daily energy requirement. The next method is uh, conduct conducting a survey on the equipments available in the household. Uh, you just need to look at the nameplates and then you duplicate them in a table, um, in a table um, uh, like this. You can put it in Excel, Excel, uh, Excel uh, document like this. Um, uh, this Excel document, in this Excel document, you can record the equipment name, the number of equipment, the, uh, the what the wattage per equipment, and then the usage per day. Um, thank you, uh, Naftali. You recommended that I adjust make the usage for fridge. To 16 hours that gives us the total energy requirements per day in this part um, let's proceed let's proceed um, to the next uh, stage where you um, you do the PV uh, panel sizing and what you need to do is to divide the total energy requirement divided by the peak sun hours. The data on peak sun hours is found from the global uh, irradiance uh, maps. This one is from NASA. You can get it also from your National Meteorological uh, uh, Station um, and many other uh, platforms. You can see Kenya is within the tropics and uh, along the equator. Our sun, uh, peak sun hours is this range, is around six hours. Um, for my town, it's between 5.4 to around 6. Let's work with 6 for this case. And uh, so that the required wattage per day will be given by 16,050 uh, watts hours divided by peak sun hours, where we get the wattage that is required uh, to be 2,675. Uh, for solar PV systems, you need uh, to compensate for losses and uh, for this case, we are giving it a factor of 1.35 so that the total wattage to be supplied by our PV panels will be 3,611 watts. Uh, there are also a number of sizes of panels in the market. We have 
80 watts, 100 watts, uh, 250 watts, 300 watts, 345, 450, 545, and, and many others. Uh, for this case, we have chosen 545 watts panel from Jingo. And um, the number of panels that we are going to need uh, will be 3611 divided by 545 watts, which gives us 6.63 panels, which we can round off to seven panels. Uh, the next step will be the battery sizing and uh, in the battery sizing uh, we are going to work first by getting the design charge current in AH um, which is given by the required total energy divided by the system voltage. We are going to uh, select a system voltage that would be suitable for our system. The rule of the thumb is uh, for systems less than 1200 watts um, you can comfortably use a 12 volt system uh, for 1200 to 3000 you can comfortably to do a uh, 24 volt uh, voltage system uh, for systems beyond uh, 3000 um, i recommend that you do a 48 volt uh, systems so that um, for our case if we introduce an ef uh, efficiency factor of 90 percent our battery uh, storage capacity will be given by uh, 16,050 uh, divided by 48 and divided by uh, efficiency factor which is 0.9 which gives us 371 AH. If we round it off uh, to 400 AH, that would be the capacity of our storage. Um, that would be the, uh, our, our, our design charge current capacity. But remember, we need also to uh, select the type of battery if we choose a uh, lead acid battery uh, we are going to factor in a depth of discharge of 50 percent um, but if it's going to be lithium battery we can discharge it up to 95 percent so for our case we are going to do 400 h divided by 0 0.5 uh, to uh, take care of the depth of discharge where we get uh, 800 AH as our capacity, storage capacity. Uh, this is not still enough. Um, solar uh, energy is is affected or um, is is as um, is affected by seas change in seasons. Um, during winter, um, our battery might not get. Uh, irradiance and we therefore need to give it some days of autonomy so that we can safeguard it from the challenges of change in seasons so for this case we are giving it two days of autonomy it's recommended that we do two to three days so we choose two days and uh, our capacity now goes up from 800 ah to 1600 AH after factoring in the days of autonomy. Uh, finally, the number of batteries that we will need will finally be 1600 AH divided by 200 AH. 200 AH is the size of the battery that we are going to use for our case. So we are going to have eight batteries of 200 AH each. And um, batteries come in sizes of uh, especially the lead acid batteries come in sizes of 100 ah uh, 70 ah 50 ah uh, 150 ah 200 ah and uh, many others so for this case we choose 200 ah which comes to eight batteries um let's go to the next um item which is the inverter sizing and this is our fourth step 
So for the inverter, all you need to do is to multiply the daily system wattage by um, 1.25. Um, our system uh, will be supplied by um, panels giving us uh, 3,611 watts. So we multiply that uh, daily wattage by uh, this factor and we get 4,513 watts. Um, what we need to do is we can round it off. Inverters uh, come in sizes from as little as as low as 300 watts, uh, 600 watts, 1200 watts, 2400 watts, 3000 watts, 5000 watts, as big as 10,000 watts um, on industrial scale, even up to 22 and even at the bigger sizes. So for this case, we choose a 5 kilowatt inverter. Uh, it is also very important to know the surge, uh, uh, the power surge capacity of your inverter so that uh, you can accommodate uh, induction uh, power uh, equipments like motors used in the uh, refrigerators, the water pumps, and the vans. Uh, these loads, uh, you need to give it a starting uh, current of up to three times their uh, rated current. So uh, the inverter choice should be able to accommodate uh, the power surge. Um, the next item to uh, size is the solar charge controller. And there are two ways of sizing a solar charge controller. For, low, uh, for small systems uh, below um, that, that use um, a DC uh, loads with the DC loads like the DC uh, but, uh, DC bulbs, uh, laptops and other accessories that you draw directly from the solar charger controller. Uh, uh, I would recommend that uh, you add all the DC loads divide by the system uh, voltage and then uh, multiply by a factor of uh, 1.25 uh, 1 um, for uh, systems uh, other systems um, bigger systems I would recommend that you use the second method where you use the um, uh, short circuit current um, for the short circuit current um, figure is found on the data sheet for your panels so you go to you look for ISA, isc that is a short circuit open uh, open circuit uh, current uh, for this uh, panel it's 13.944 plus or minus four percent so you multiply it with the number of um, arrays uh, modules uh, modules in the array uh, for this case, we have seven uh, modules. Uh, so 13.94 times 7 times a factor of 1.25, which gives you uh, uh, which gives you uh, 120 amps capacity uh, solar charger controller. Uh, thank you so much for being my good student today again. Um, looking forward to your feedback so that uh, we can improve our content. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.